Van life has become extremely popular over the last few years and for good reason. Been a way for people to travel and live on the cheap or even just go glamping for the weekend. I saw a website where you can rent out vans by the night like an Airbnb and I was so curious about how they perform. So I met up with Lisa who's been renting out her converted Sprinter van about what it's been like, how much it's rented out and how much it's made. Let's start by taking a tour of the van. This van costs about $90,000. Added to that $90,000 is the taxes and the importer fees and the registration fees. So it was, it was, it was pretty steep. <laughs> this is Lady Luna. As soon as you come in, you see the kitchen. We have a two burner stove that runs on a propane tank that sits under the sink. We also have a pretty big fridge with a freezer compartment, which is actually super convenient unless you forget to take food out of it, which I've done before. Up here, we have our headliner shelf. This is super handy. We keep all of our bedding up here, towels, the first aid kit toolkit is all back here. And what I was most interested to find out is where the bathroom was. So in here, we have a full nature's head composting toilet. The way that this works is there's a vent that is plugged into here. So like all the smell kind of goes out from under the van. Oh, wow. So it barely smells. It's composting, so that doesn't smell either. It's got this like coconut mulch stuff in it. It lasts for like 90 days, it doesn't smell. Oh and God. when it's done, you just dump it in a trash bag and you throw it away. So this is where we keep all of our cookware, bowls, plates, cutting boards, things like that. These are super nice because they're on springs. So unless you're like really going at it on a forest road, like they're shut. Here we have our sink. We have a 20 gallon water tank that sits under that cushion right there. The water situation in an off-grid van is very different from your regular RVs. This van has a three-stage water filter system, which means you can have clean drinking water no matter where you are. This van also has a seven gallon gray water tank. So every probably few days you would need to dump this out in the specific areas where you're allowed to do that. And like a lot of these vans, the dining area converts into a bed. This enables us to just like have a comfortable place to work and sleep. It's super nice. It's like really easy to convert. And then in here, we have our garage space where we keep like all of our camping materials, hiking poles. We're really big skiers, so all of our skis and things are gonna fit back there. Um, wow. We always equip our renters with like chairs, a hammock, um, you know, all the, all the fun stuff that you need when you camp. Okay, so you've seen what the van looks like. Now let's jump into the financials. Did you buy it outright in cash or finance it? Because it was a private sale, we had to buy it outright in cash. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we took out an unsecured personal loan. So what is the interest rate like for that? We have a 6% interest rate, which kind of sucks, but like it is what it is. It's about what houses are now though. So I feel like it's really not too bad. We actually didn't get approved for as much as we thought we were gonna get approved for. Oh, gotcha. So we put about 30% down on the van out of pocket. So they ended up putting about $30,000 down, financing the remaining $60,000 at a 6% rate and having a monthly payment of about... We pay $879 a month. And there are some other expenses involved as well. I would imagine, so ensuring this is kind of maybe different from just a normal van. It's basically an RV, like it is classified as, as an RV. I have Allstate and Allstate partners with National General, and so they have an RV insurance that allows you to rent it out. And we pay $124 a month for that. Okay, nice, nice. That's not bad. It's actually less than we were expecting to pay, yeah. in all honesty. I'm guessing filling up the tank hurts a little bit. Yeah, it's it's a sore subject, mm -hmm. but it's also a diesel tank, which was actually a big selling point for us for this van specifically because diesel engines last longer than gas engines. It's a 24 gallon tank. It costs about like $120 to $130 to fill up the tank. Fortunately, the gas is something that the renters pay for, so you wouldn't have to include this in the cost of every rental. So how many renters have you had so far? We've had eight renters so far. And you're able to rent it out for what looks like a really good rate. How did you kind of come up with the rate? It is a steady 225 per night nice. right now. I was kind of talking to um, the people on the platform that we rented out 
from and seeing you know what works best we wanted to start kind of on the lower end of that because we were a new van mm -hmm. we didn't want to be like too expensive that people didn't want to rent it too cheap that people would think there's like something wrong with it so we picked like a sweet spot so on average how much has it made per month I guess? in june we made five hundred dollars from one rental plus a friend rental which was free in july we made seventeen hundred dollars from I think nine nights. And that was cool because that was the month where we did a two week long road trip. So mm -hmm. even though we had it for half the month, we were still able to make like $1,700 from it. Yeah, so it fully paid for itself with the one. monthly payment and then some. Yeah. Like how cool is that? And then in August, this has been our most lucrative month. It's gonna be out for 23 days out of the month. Wow. And we're gonna make almost $4,000. Nice. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. The lingering question that I think most of us have about van life is where the heck do you park? How difficult is it to find a place to park it and do you ever have to pay like a nightly rate? So it depends on whether you wanna do what's called dispersed camping or camp at like a legitimate campground. So dispersed camping is allowed on national forest roads. Um, there's a few apps that you can use to see where other people have gone and see if it's like a viable spot, see if the forest road is okay. And so in National Forest, there's like forest service roads and you can pretty much camp on any of the forest service roads as long as you're something like 50 feet away from a body of water. There's also um, BLM land, which is land that's managed by the Bureau of Land Management underneath of um, the federal government. And that is completely free to camp on. Wow. Kind cool. of wherever you want. There are so many pros and cons to owning a van. The main pros being that it can make a pretty good amount of money being rented out. And then you can use it yourself when it's not rented out. But also generate enough income for it to pay for itself. Like why would we not do yeah. that? One of the major cons, however, is it's really hard to automate the renting out process. We have it down to a system. It is pretty time consuming. When the renters come and we meet them or we do a drop off or whatever, we have to give them a full like 30 minute orientation. Mm -hmm. So that also takes time. Another thing to consider is that it is a depreciating asset. So over time, the van is going to be worth less money. And of course, things are gonna break. There have been a lot of repairs that we've had to make. We've had to reinforce some cabinets and you know reinforce a bunch of stuff. Just like little things kind of keep getting messed up. There's so much to know with owning or renting out one of these vans. So I was curious to know if Lisa had any advice for anyone that's looking to do what she's doing. I wish that I had like gone out and rented a van and yeah. like tried it because I think that would have given me a better idea of like what I actually want in a van. I wish I just like had a better understanding of like the way that the systems worked. There was definitely a learning curve for me because I'd never like done any of this before. Right. So I just wish I knew like generally more about owning a van. Overall, it's really cool to see someone is able to fully pay for their van and even make a profit on top of it while still being able to use it. I think this is an awesome idea if you love using these vans but want to offset the cost of owning one. But it is important to note the cons that it is more time consuming than Airbnb. Trust me, I know because I rented one recently and it was definitely more involved than renting a house video on that coming soon. Hope that you guys enjoyed learning more about this side hustle and stay tuned for my video soon where I spent a weekend in one of these vans. But that is all for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.